This is Fearless Rebel Radio, a podcast about body positivity, self-worth, anti-dieting, and feminism. I am your host, Summer Inanen, a professionally trained coach specializing in body image, self-worth, and confidence, and the best-selling author of Body Image Remix. If you're ready to break free of societal standards and stop living behind the number on your scale, then you have come to the right place. Welcome to the show. This is episode 87, and I am interviewing Mallory Dunn, the creator of Smart Glamour. She gives us a behind-the-scenes perspective on the fashion industry as it relates to body positivity, including how misleading sizing charts are and how clothing can help you with body acceptance. She also gives us some styling tips for those of us who are challenged in that area. You can find all the links and resources mentioned in this podcast at summerinandin.com forward slash 87. That's 87. Before we begin, I have two quick announcements. First, if you haven't already done so, please leave a review for this podcast on iTunes. Leaving a review helps others to find this show, and I'm always loving the reviews that I read from you, including this one from Boston Girl 2015. She writes, Finally, a podcast that speaks truth and value in a funny, heartwarming way. Summer is brilliant and cool, and it's obvious she practiced what she preaches. Thank you, Boston girl. I think I'm pretty cool too. All right. (laughs) Secondly, you can get the free 10-day body confidence makeover at summerinandin.com forward slash freebies with 10 steps to take right now to feel better in your body. Today's guest is Mallory Dunn. Mallory is a NYC-based fashion designer who launched Smart Glamour in 2014, Smart Glamour morphed into what it is today after many discussions about women's body image issues and the lack of accurate representation of women and femmes in the media. Always having the desire to make clothes, Mallory found her real passion behind the designs when she realized she could help people with her garments. She's excited as Smart Glamour continues to grow into an even more fully realized movement of body positivity and overall wellness for women and femme presenting and identifying individuals. There is great stuff in this episode. I know you're going to enjoy it. So let's get started. Hi, Mallory. Welcome to the show. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you here. I've never had a style expert on the show. And I think that you're going to be able to provide some useful information as well as helpful conversations around dissecting the fashion industry and sizing and how to be a body positive shopper and and everything else related to that. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much. I'm happy to talk about all of those things. <laughs> So before we get into some of that, I would I would love for you to tell tell everyone a little bit about about yourself and Smart Glamour. So um, my name is Mallory Dunn, as you said. I'm the owner and designer of Smart Glamour. Smart Glamour has been around for just a little over three years. I launched it in or a spring of 2014. I have been doing fashion design. For uh, over 10 years, I started teaching myself to sew when I was in high school, and then I took fashion classes in high school, and then I went to FIT for fashion design. After that, I decided to get a bachelor's in art and design education from Pratt Institute after FIT. And then after that, I I, uh, wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I took a quick break, um, and then I went back into the fashion industry. I started working in corporate fashion design for juniors clothing, which is technically supposed to be targeted to like tweens and teenagers. But because of the price point we were making clothing at and the stores we were designing for, it's also called like a crossover customer where it's not just teenagers, but it's also young women. And I would say women from like 20 to 35, 40 who live in middle America and shop for their clothes, mostly at places like Burlington, Ross, wet seal, Walmart, places like that. And I worked in that industry for about two years and I was really unhappy with it for a lot of reasons. (laughs) Aside from just, you know, work environment and my stress level and whatnot, we also, you know, all all the clothing gets manufactured in sweatshops overseas, which is something that I um, really disagree with. And there was really a lack of creativity on, in every way, it's, it's a lot of copying clothes from 
stores that have a slightly higher price point and it's really it's 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 more corporate than it is fashion and it's really just not not super enjoyable (laughs) yeah so I quit that after feeling like I got everything I could out of it and I started I started doing freelance work and I basically did freelance work involving anything that I knew how to do so from tailoring to custom clothes to making specs and sketches for other designers to working as a seamstress at other clothing companies to teaching sewing lessons drawing lessons like any you name it I did it and it was during that time that I had more energy and like emotional space and time to really think about what I wanted to do in fashion and and how I could get to my dream goal of like making just making and designing my own things and selling them And at that same time, I had met my now husband and we just started dating and we would have all these really great conversations about, you know, just life and just everything that goes on in the world. And I would go on and on and on to him about the fit of clothing and the production of clothing. And also on top of that, like what it is to be a woman in the world today and in society and what that means and interactions that I would have with women and femmes and body image issues. And he was kind of like, I don't know if you realize this, but this seems to be like what you care about the most. And I had never really thought of it that way and never really like put two and two together. And then somehow along that way, I decided like, oh, like I could help fix these issues by making clothing and kind of like combine those two passions together. And so the main idea behind Smart Glamour came out of my thinking that the two biggest reasons that women and femmes have such struggles with their body image is the complete misrepresentation that goes on in the media and through fashion and beauty and, and um, celebrity culture tied into how hard it is to shop for clothing, how impossible it is to shop for cute clothing if you're plus size and how hard it is for people to get clothes that really fit well. And that, you know, when we go into a dressing room and something doesn't fit, we, we internalize that and kind of blame ourselves. And so Smart Glamour kind of attacks both of those two main issues, along with tons of other things as well. But those two main problems and solves them to kind of just help combat all of those things. Yeah, I just um, before we go further, I, I want to just ask you to define the word femmes for people who are not familiar with that term. So I'm not the foremost uh, person to be speaking on this because I don't actually identify as femme. I'm a, um, I'm a cisgender woman, but femme is a term that many people use who are quote unquote feminine in presentation, but don't identify as a cisgender woman. Okay. Um, so that can be trans women. It can be non-binary people. It really runs the gamut. Um, and I would definitely suggest getting that information better definition straight from femmes. My assistant at Smart Glamour is a non-binary femme, so I've learned a lot from her. Her name is Nikki Padula. And just from being part of the body positive community, I've learned a lot from femmes and non-binary people and women of color that are definitely way more expert on that <laughs> on that uh, topic. But I, to me, body positivity and fat acceptance and all these things that I'm striving to push forward really aren't truly what they are unless you're also including people who are not just cisgender women. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks for, thanks for mentioning that. And I I always say Google's great for when you, when you feel uninformed, (laughs) which I do, I still do a lot of the times in certain things. So (laughs) that's good. So um, why don't you just explain a little bit about smart glamour, like what, what it is, what you offer, your, your values. Cause I think that that's really important before we, before we keep going here. Yeah. So smart glamour is a clothing company. The clothes are all customizable, but you don't have to get them customized. You can order just regular sizes The customizations range from customizations that help with fit to customizations that are more about preference. So something that is like a fit thing would be a bust to waist ratio customization. So say you carry your weight in your midsection or the opposite of that, you maybe you have a large bust size and your waist is smaller. Both of those things can make it hard to find tops and dresses that fit properly. Maybe they're always baggy in the bust or maybe they're always 
tight in the waist if they fit your bust, et cetera, et cetera. So anything on Smart Glamour, you add on that customization, you tell me your bust measurement and your waist measurement, and then I'll make it to you. So that's just one example of like a fit customization. And then an example of a more of a design preference customization would be, you know, oh, I don't want a short sleeve on this. I want a long sleeve. So there's endless, endless, endless customizations you can add to any garment on the site. The standard sizes that I offer range from extra, extra small through 6X, which is, if you're thinking about numbers, kind of like saying zero, double zero through 32 or 36. Okay. We'll touch on this again later, I'm sure, but yeah. sizes are consistent between any between anything or anyone. So that's why when you go to Smart Glamour, there are no numerical sizes. It's just a size chart with our lettered sizes and then measurements because sizes are not consistent between brands for lots of reasons. But yeah, so we offer a full range of sizes. And then on top of that, everything is customizable. Everything is handmade. Everything is ethically made. The majority of the fabrics are vegan. It's all like quality clothing that is not going to made not made to fall apart <laughs> um, that you know where it came from and it it tends to be more feminine whatever that may mean to people in styling but everything come in black everything comes in solids and prints and it's really a company to that's been created to like help you find anything that's missing from your your wardrobe it sounds like a dream for people, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> you know, because I, I, I looked at the prices and I was like, what? This is almost seems too good to be true. Yeah, that's like another thing that's super important to me. There's so many quotes by so many different wonderful feminists and um, activists that rally around the idea that like in order for something to be truly radical and, and really help people, it also needs to be accessible. And I take accessibility really seriously, not only in size accessibility, but in price accessibility. Mm -hmm. I believe in ethical fashion so strongly and slow fashion and all of those things and and trying not to support sweatshop sweatshop labor. But at the same time, when the only options other than, than clothes made in sweatshops are clothes that cost hundreds of dollars, I mean, it's just, it's just not accessible for a lot of people. So I try to keep the prices as low as I can by keeping the silhouettes pretty streamlined, keeping the fabrics, things that are more affordable for me to buy, which also makes them easier to take care of. You know, we don't use a lot of silk or anything like that. And by making all the add-ons completely optional. So, you know, you don't have to pay for pockets and a hood and all these fancy things unless you want them. Yeah, great. That's awesome. And your representation in terms of the the women that you use, the bodies that you use, the individuals, I should say, that you mm-hmm. use on in your on your website, on your advertising, like you you really you have representation. It's not like the representation that you see happening by like Target that just has, you know, like one girl who's maybe a size 10 <laughs> in in the ad campaign. Yeah. And like, how, how important was that for you when you started, when you started the business? Super important. I've been doing it since day one. Obviously, the more I go on, the more I grow as a person, the band or the brand grows as a brand. And also the more access I have to grabbing more and more bodies and more and more people that want to get involved. You know, from day one, I've, I've been saying everybody, anybody, all people, it doesn't matter what you look like, who you are, how you identify what abilities or disabilities you may have, you can model for me. And there's a lot of people that don't believe me when I say that, because, you know, there's lots of companies that say, oh, we're, we're looking for diverse casting, but then the outcome is still much of the same. It's still hourglass. It's still at least five, six and above. It's still under the age of 35. It's still all of those things. And so you you go to a casting and you get your hopes up and then you'll you never get picked. And Smart Glamour is the opposite. If you come in to one of my castings and you have a really great attitude and you are just happy to be there and kind and you showed up on time, I'm going to pick you. And if I can't pick you this time around, I will work with anyone <laughs> just as just as a as long as you keep coming back to me and keep applying, I will end up working with pretty much every everyone and anyone who applies. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And you're I I noticed you use the hashtag all means all. Mm-hmm. What? Um, that was a big yeah. Thing. Yeah. Tell me about that. So from the beginning of me understanding hashtags, first of all, you know, when I started, the, when I started the company, I had no idea 
really what I was doing and and kind of have learned social media as I've gone along and learned the importance the importance of hashtags and and creating campaigns and um, using them to further the message. And so I started using the hashtag fashion for all. But then, as I had mentioned, you know, there's lots of companies that are kind of just trying to cash in on body positivity, but they really don't mean it. You know, they still mean acceptable fat bodies. They still mean mostly white bodies. They still mean hourglass shaped bodies, bodies that don't have cellulite, bodies that don't have acne, bodies that aren't disabled, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really want to drive home that when I say all, I really do mean all. And so I started doing campaigns in just this year, 2017, that are based solely on that idea. The first one that we did was in January, and it was based on the idea of gender. So everyone that took part in that campaign identified as anything other than a cisgender woman. So any okay. anyone who was comfortable wearing the kind of clothing that I make and does not identify as cisgender. So I had trans women, I had non-binary people, I had femmes, etc. And then the second one, which we just released last week, another all means all was all people who wear a size 24 and above. Because even when you can find plus size clothing, it really often stops at a 3X or a 22-ish around there. And the representation even more so, you know, even even companies that do go up to the 30s and sizes, they very, very rarely have representation of those bodies. Mm -hmm. So that was the last one. And then we have more coming up. We're going to I'm going to do one with all babes of color. I'm going to do one with disabled people. I'm going to do one with people over the age of 45. Basically, all all the groups that like are being left out. (laughs) Yeah, that's fantastic. Have always been included in Smart Glamour, but I also never wanted to be exploiting their differences. You know, I didn't, I've always had transgender models and um, non-binary models, but it was never my place to be like, hey, this is my one transgender model in this group. Let's point them out so that, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't feel comfortable doing that. So, but I do at the same time think that it's important to give those people fair representation and to and to highlight them, especially with the status of our country at the moment. <laughs> yes, it's so refreshing to see. And, you know, you, you clearly have a lot of integrity and solid, solid values. And I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on brands, especially having worked in major retailers, like when you see brands like Target or ModCloth that are trying to incorporate quote unquote representation into their campaigns, but really fall short you know what what are your thoughts on that well I think there's just a rampant underlying film of fat phobia that exists everywhere and unless you're really actively trying to fight it it's just it's a uh, it's insidious it, it, you, it's everywhere and I think that I think that a lot of brands especially the bigger corporations like Target and Dove and whatnot you know, they they saw something that was that was gaining popularity and they jumped on it. And right now there's a huge divide going on mm-hmm. in the body positivity and fat acceptance and body neutrality movement between people who are really occupied or um, focused on health and what that means to them and acceptable bodies. And then there's the people who are saying, you know, body positivity came out of fat acceptance. So if you're not centering fat people and, and people of color and et cetera, you're really not doing it right. And I think that companies, big giant brands are never really going to care about that stuff. You know, one of, one of my biggest problems with the fashion industry specifically is how exclusive and pretentious it tries to be. Um, and is quite honestly, you know, I've always been interested in fashion because I I love personal style and I love clothes and I love clothes like on my own. And a comment that I've gotten my whole life from people is like, oh, I'm not a fashion person or I don't really know style. And and everyone has that idea because the fashion industry is set up to make you feel that way. It's set up to be exclusionary so that you are trying to achieve it and therefore like spending more and more money trying to get into the cool club you know Mm -hmm. um and I really try to make that not a thing (laughs) with my company like smart glamour is for everyone and it's super easy to wear and it's 
super accessible. And like, yeah, it's also super cute, but super cute things should be for all people. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting because you start to think about, okay, that you can actually support body body positivity with your dollars in terms of the brands that you invest in for yourself. And by looking at their, you know, their standards and, and, you know, paying attention to things like are they created in in sweatshops and things like that, Mm -hmm. which I don't think, I honestly don't think I've given a lot of thought about until recent recently and just kind of reading through your website and thinking about it it really it opened my mind and so yeah i would love to hear your just kind of your your opinion on the importance of looking for brands whether it is clothing or other things that align with feminism and feminist principles and body positivity So that's definitely one of the most important things that I try to keep as a constant in my life. I would much rather buy anything that I'm getting from a small business, from a business that's run by women or femmes or people of color. I think it's important where we spend our money because we're such a country that or an even world that is so, you know, capitalist and and does rely on money. If you can spend your money places that make a difference I think that's a good way to balance that out. As far as when it comes to slow fashion versus fast fashion and ethical fashion versus fashion made in sweatshops, you know, 97% of the clothing that is bought and worn in America is made overseas. And it only takes a factory to mess up on two or not meet two labor standards to be called a sweatshop. You know, Sweatshops are not only in China and in India, they're also here, they're also in LA, they're all over the place. And I think that demanding that where you buy your your clothing is treating its employees fairly, you know, that's an important thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's also a very easy thing to kind of ignore. You know, I think that a lot, most people know that a lot of clothing is made in sweatshops, but you kind of push it out of your mind. You know, if if you can buy a shirt for five (laughs) dollars when you walk into a store in Manhattan to buy some fabric and a yard of fabric is five dollars, you know, that just asks so many questions of like, who made this? How is it made? Where are they safe? Are they being paid fairly? What's their environment like? There's so, so, so much information on that. I could talk about it all day, but um, Mm -hmm. a great Binary to watch for anyone who's more interested in that is um it's on Netflix called The True Cost, which okay. is all about just how clothing is is made around the world. And it wasn't that long ago that a lot of clothes were actually still made here. You know, in in the sixties and seventies, the amount of clothing that was made in the states was the percentage was way higher. And I have a ton of videos that like go into all these details with you know numbers and statistics and all that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. if anyone wants to learn more about it, but but then on top of it, as I mentioned before, you know, there, ethical clothing is a thing and it, it is definitely a niche market, but it's most of the time very expensive. It's most of the time pretty plain and also most of the time doesn't include plus size bodies. So, you know, if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of money or you're someone who's bigger than a 12, it's really hard to shop ethically. So that's another thing to keep in mind and to like ask for for more from the people that you're shopping with. Of course. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I think I think it's just important for people to start to just as- look at look at things behind the scenes and not just kind of what you see on the surface and giving it thought and where you can put your money into better places than than to do so. You know, I think we're conscious of that as it relates to the environment and 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 human rights, but human rights is really about positivity too. And so thinking about it from from that perspective is just something that I've been thinking about lately myself. So I, I think it's important to to share and, and bring awareness to. Mm-hmm, totally. So I want to talk about sizing because you mentioned sizing and you mentioned how you don't have numerical sizes on on your site. And I'm I'm curious to know the backstory on sizing. I mean, it's pretty obvious that sizing can differ greatly based on on where you get your clothes. I have I have two dresses, one of them, and the difference between there's they're 10 sizes apart from each other and they both fit me. So like <laughs> clearly there's an issue there. So I'd love you to deconstruct how misleading size charts are. 
So there's so much information on this, and I'm like trying to think of the the most important things to highlight. So size charts were created because we moved from people just making a garment for a person to us mass manufacturing clothing. So once anything's mass manufactured, there needs to be some kind of chart or guide for how it's going to be made. And then so people can pick out the size that they need. Just based on that alone, you it would make sense that not every person is going to fit into a set size. You know, there's billions of people in the world and most size charts have anywhere from just three sizes to even one that like mine that's more inclusive to 12 sizes. You know, there aren't only 12 shapes of people. <laughs> people come in all shapes and sizes. Right, right. So just, just on that alone, to think that you are going to fit into everything that's, that is a certain size is just, it's not a reality. Then the next thing that is important that ties back into the whole ethical factor, you know, I know this completely firsthand working as a designer in a fast fashion environment where we're making clothes for all different stores. So giant stores like Walmart, etc., places like that, their clothes aren't, you know, designed by a little Walmart design team. They're designed by these places that are design houses like the one that I worked for, but I'm not the the place I worked wasn't the only one. There's tons of them. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're all making clothing separately. And we all have separate tech designers and we all have separate fit models that are coming in. And then on top of that, we're not even making the clothes. We're contracting people in India and in China to make the clothes. And it's happened many times that companies will place an order with a factory in a third world and then a third world country uh, and they will outsource it even further. So because it's so cheap and because it's so fast and because the orders are so large and because they're being produced halfway around the world, there is no real accountability for how the clothing is made. And many times things will come back to a design house and they won't be what we wanted, you know, and we'll ask for corrections and we'll ask for corrections and we'll ask for corrections. But because the order is so large and it needs to be out of store at a certain time, we're all working on timelines and, At a certain point, it gets down to like, do we accept this item that's not really right? Or do we lose a million dollar sale? And so we'll push through and accept an item that's not correct. And that could be that it's not correct in fit, that it's not correct in color, that it's not correct in fabric weight, like so many things. So, you know, when when you're going out and you're buying a tank top for $4 and then you wonder why the strap breaks or you wonder why the strap is really not the same color as the tank top body or why after washing it once it's all pilly all of those things are tied directly back into how things are made and where they're made and size is the same we as it's speaking as like a designer in in that that kind of design house make a a template for how something should fit but that doesn't mean that it'll work out that way when we finally get it and then on top of that (laughs) All companies come up with their own exact size charts. You know, if you're shopping online and you go to one store and you look up a medium and then you go and you look up the size chart and you look up a medium in another store, the measurements are not going to be exactly the same. Everyone has slightly different fits and slightly different grading between their sizes. So especially if you're somebody who's kind of between sizes, you may be one size in in one store and one size in another store. And there's really no rhyme or reason to that. Yeah, it's so I I feel like the what you said about what you know, if you have 12 different sizes, you're essentially assuming there's 12 different bodies, and that's it. And that, to me, just put the whole thing into perspective, as it relates to how messed up size charts are. But, and I think logically, a lot of us understand that. But emotionally, there's still that connection to being in a particular size or size range. And yeah, I'm curious to know how you know your advice to women who want to detach from size, like how do you suggest they shop? Well, again, before I get into how I suggest they shop, like it's not it's also not even that you're suggesting that there's 12 different bodies or body types for 12 different sizes. It's it's actually that there's one kind of body and that same kind of body is just getting smaller and bigger. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Because, you know, when somebody creates a pattern, 
I like base most of my patterns and my pricing and, and all of those things off of about a one X the middle size on our chart. It's also the most common size of uh, women and femmes in America. So it just makes sense that way. So when I'm creating a pattern, it's based off that size. Then I'm grading it up and down to get all the way down to an extra, extra small and get all the way up to a six X. And for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm basing everything off of that size chart that I've created, but there are going to be bodies that line somewhere up in the middle because either you have a large chest or you carry your weight in your midsection or maybe you're petite on your upper half and you have really long legs or I mean there's this literally endless combinations of body types and proportions and measurements so my number one tip for shopping anywhere is know your actual measurements and I know that for a lot of people especially people who may be um, recovering from eating disorders Measuring yourself can be triggering and not a great experience. In that case, I would ask maybe to have a friend help you that you really trust and just keep reminding yourself and have your friend keep reminding you that like your measurements, first of all, are going to ebb and flow, especially if you are a woman or from, uh, you know, month to month, week to week, parts of our bodies change. So keep in mind that like your body's going to change and also that these are just numbers and facts and they really don't mean anything other than how much fabric and thread somebody needs to clothe you. It doesn't make you better or worse or more attractive or less attractive or more worthy or less worthy. It's just numbers. It's just facts. And it's how you're going to get something that fits. Wouldn't you rather have something show up in the mail and you put it on and it fits like a glove than like guessing and having to be you know, buying it in a few sizes and trying on ones that are definitely not going to fit and then feeling however you're going to feel about that. If you can take out some of the guesswork from the start, then you're eliminating some of that like try on struggle. Mm -hmm. So definitely know your, your measurements. Most important ones are bust, waist and hip. That's what most just standard size chart will have. And then my second thing is to always check size charts. Pretty much any online website will have size charts. And obviously this this is, pertains mostly to online shopping because if you're more in a store, you can grab the items and, and try them on. But any, when you're shopping online, there should be a size chart. There are size charts at, if it's a retailer where, you know, like Mod Cloth that you brought up or like ASOS, um, stores like that online, they're not, they're carrying clothes from all different brands. You know, not everything that Mod Cloth carries is made by the same person. So not everything is going to fit the same size chart because they're being made everywhere and, and different designers have different, different size charts, as I, as I uh, mentioned. So there should be some kind of fit guide or information or note that says, you know, this actually doesn't fit our size chart. It runs a little smaller. It runs a little bigger, something like that. If you're shopping from a small business like Smart Glamour or like any other indie designer that exists, their size chart should be tied directly to what they're making my patterns, the pieces that I make go straight off of my size chart. And then the next thing that I would suggest is to know just a little bit about fabric. Know a little bit about what kind of fabric has stretch, what kind of fabric doesn't, if the fabric is lightweight and drapey or if it's more stiff. And then think about that in combination with the silhouette of the fabric. I mean, the silhouette of the of the item, excuse me. So for instance, if you're you're someone who carries your weight in your midsection. If you're buying something that's very fitted, you're going to need to take into account your largest size, your largest body me measurement. So maybe your waist or your hip and then buy based on that size. And then you may need to bring it to a tailor to take it in. Obviously with Smart Glamour, that's the part that you get to skip because you can just customize it from the beginning and it will show up fitting. But if you're shopping from somewhere where customizations aren't an option, you should shop from your largest measurement and then take it to a tailor to get it to get it fixed so that it fits you perfectly. But if you're buying something that's not very fitted, that's loose, then you can take that into account when you're when you're selecting your size from a size chart. Awesome. That's so good. And I so on the topic of of buying clothes and style, like I I'm curious to know your advice for for women who hate shopping, who don't really have a particular style that they like or and they don't know what they should buy. Like what where do they begin? Oh, 
I think the most important thing to start with is to try to like think back to like why you feel like you don't have a style and why you feel like you can't connect to clothing. Mm -hmm. I feel like most people, unless you just literally are not interested in clothing at all, those that's not really what I'm speaking to right now. I'm speaking to people who like feel like they would be interested in clothing, but they just don't know where to start or they feel like they've been left out. And so they don't really get it, you know, um, or feel like they get it. I would start like thinking and asking yourself, why, like, why do you feel that way? And if the answer, which I'm guessing most of the time has to do with it, is that like you feel like fashion isn't for you, you feel like you don't see yourself represented anywhere, you know, shopping from places that do represent somebody that looks like you is super important. Unfortunately, I'm sure that, you know, as I know, there are a lot of brands yeah. out there that really do that, but which is why I do it. But also like finding bloggers, different fashion bloggers who might have a similar shape to you or a similar style or a similar budget or a similar uh, work life. Maybe there's so many fashion bloggers that exist in this world and they all kind of have a, a different, slightly different niche. So if you find someone who you relate to in some way, they would be able to give you to give you great style tips. Whenever somebody is shopping with me in one of my pop ups or even online, if they're messaging me um, and they ask me things about like, oh, color that's good for my skin tone or like things like that. I really try to stay away from answering questions like that because I think that all of those things are just tied back into ridiculous societal beauty standards and, you know, trying to look thin or trying to look young or trying to look all these ways, you know, like if for some reason you're drawn to a pattern or you're drawn to a color, then you should get it. You should wear it. You should try it out. So if you're drawn to a color and you're worried, like, oh, I don't know if it'll look good on my skin, like according to who, <laughs> according to what? <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't and the, don't buy into that stuff. And that goes along with like the word like flattering, which I know you, I'm assuming you hate that word. <laughs> I, do, I do well I see the thing is that I, my problem is not so much with the word my problem is is what we've turned that word into yeah because if you look at if you look up the word flattering in the dictionary the actual definition is that it pleases you or like brings you gratification which like that's great like that's a great word mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm all for that but somehow along the way we have turned flattering into meaning that makes your body look better or that makes you look thin, which are often synonymous. <laughs> right. <laughs> which is which is garbage to me. And I actually I did a campaign about a, a little over a year ago now that that went um, somewhat viral ish called I'm that was called uh, hashtag I'm flattered. And it was I grabbed a, a group of uh, people who have all been told that they shouldn't wear a certain thing because, quote unquote, it's not flattering. So whether that's something tight or short or something with a loud print or something sleeveless or something that may show off a scar that they have, people in their life or even strangers have taken it upon themselves to say, oh, you know, you really shouldn't wear that. It's not flattering. So I put them in, in exactly those things and photographed them. And it was a really wonderful experience. You can find that online if you just Googled Smart Glamour, I'm flattered. Just because I was just trying to take the word back and, and turn it into what it really means. Because if somebody says, oh, I'm so flattered, like, you know, that that is the actual meaning of the word. Like, oh, I'm, I'm so pleased that you think that, whatever that may be. That doesn't mean... When somebody says, oh, I'm so flattered, it doesn't mean like, oh, I'm so thin. Like, that's not what that means. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. And I, I'm going to link to that video in the show notes, which everyone can find at summerinand.com forward slash 87. And as we start to wrap things up here, I, I would just love you to hear your, your perspective on the importance of clothing as it relates to body acceptance. Because I personally think that Having clothes that make you feel good, clothes that fit, that aren't like tight, that aren't reminding you of your body changing or waistbands digging in or, mm -hmm. you know, things, straps digging in kind of just make us feel physically uncomfortable. And a lot of the times when we're on our body acceptance journey, especially starting out, that physical discomfort is actually more emotional discomfort around it as well. So I'm curious to just hear your perspective on on clothing and body acceptance and and how those two come together. For sure. I mean, it, it's not an accident that I decided to 
make a clothing company that is body positive and, and aims to help people. Cause I do personally really believe that, that clothes and style can help you in so many ways. And, you know, the older I get and the, the more deep into activism I get, the more my definition of that changes. You know, when I was a teenager, clothing to me was just like, I love clothes because it shows I can, you know, do self-expression and like tell people who I am and, and what kind of things I'm interested in and how I like to present myself, which is super important. Having clothes that's accessible to all bodies is super important because, you know, there, there may be people with certain body types or certain sizes and shapes and proportions who've always wanted to wear feminine clothing, but they can't. And, not, you know, giving people that accessibility is really important to me. You know, if you've always really wanted to wear a frilly dress, but you've never been able to find one that fits and it's you see other people wearing really wonderful, pretty things and you feel like it's not for you, being able to have that and have it be for you is life changing. You know, have when I had a three month pop up shop in the East Village of Manhattan about almost two years ago now, and uh, I had it for three months and I had all of my sizes in stock at all times. And I'm pretty sure it's it's basically unheard of to have a store that has, you know, extra to small through six X on the same rack. Yeah sizes, same design, same prices. And so people could come in with their friends, no matter what sizes they were and shop together and put the same thing on at the same time. And all of those things are really cathartic experiences and really wonderful experiences to have. You know, I I had people come in and I had a woman who came in who I think was turning 40 and had never worn anything that was short sleeved or sleeveless. And she was like, I've been told my whole life that I'm not supposed to show my arms because they're not attractive. And I don't want to do that anymore. And I think this is a place that's safe where I can do like I can make this change here. And I was like, yes, absolutely. This is what this space is for. And I think that through all of those things, when you find clothes that that do really fit you, you know, you, you almost feel like you have like a suit of armor on. Like we all, hopefully we all have that one thing that we feel really wonderful in. And it really helps. It really, it really helps you get through the rest of your day. The rest, the rest of the stresses that exist <laughs> in the world are enough. If you're also uncomfortable in your body and in your clothing, um, that's just going to add to it. And it's part of the reason also that all of Smart Glamour's items are, designed to be very comfortable. Pretty much all of my things, if not all of them, have some kind of stretch to them, some kind of give. Because I want I want people to be comfortable. You know, I only wear clothes that are smart glamour that I've made myself and I want to be comfortable. So and then on top of that, you know, getting something that is perfectly custom made to your body is has been and I've told been told by many people who shop that way with me that it's life changing. That you don't have to worry about pulling or prodding or readjusting your clothes all day, whether that's because it's tight or even because it's loose, you know, whether you're worried about straps falling off your shoulders or your skirt hiking up or like all these things are tied into fit. So when you have something that really fits properly and you don't have to worry about that stuff, you don't have to worry about your clothes, you don't have to be adjusting them all day. And on top of that, you love the item and you feel great in it. How could that not be a wonderful tool to empower you and to help you on a on a journey to not just be okay with yourself, but also love yourself. Yeah, that's awesome. I love I want to go shopping now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, okay, so do you ship worldwide? I do. Okay, good. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I know we, we have a lot of international listeners who listen to this podcast as well. So Mm -hmm. I think that that's great. I'm going to be referring you to everyone who comes my way who struggles with shopping and finding sizes and finding things that are comfortable. I love that you said everything has stretch and give because for Mm -hmm. me, that's, oh, that is everything. I cannot stand things that dig into my body. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go shopping. (laughs) I know that, you know, these things in fashion and bodies and measurements and, and how clothes are made is not something that most people know. And a lot of companies try to keep it that way, you know, so that people buy something and then they have to buy something new and whatnot. But I try to keep things super transparent and as easy as possible. I have tons of videos about all of these things. I have videos about how to measure yourself. I have all as many different ways as I can to have people to make this easy for people. And I'm 
always happy, always available to chat via social media or via email, right through my website, anything to any kind of question if somebody has, you know, great on what to get, what size to get, what customization to add on anything. And like, once you know, then you know, and then you know how to continue shopping. So it's it's definitely something that I highly recommend. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. And so on that note, where can people find find all of your your products and these videos and what what's the best way to discover you? Yeah, so the website is just smartglamour.com and that's glamour with the O U R. And on all social media, we're just smart glamour. If you Google Smart Glamour, you will absolutely find something that leads you to me. And our videos are all on our YouTube channel, which you can find again by Googling Smart Glamour. And then we also have a separate button for that on our website that's a Smart Glamour video, which has my interviews with people. It has videos about ethical fashion. It has videos about sizing. It has panel discussion videos that I host with different types of people. It has our runway shows. It has literally everything that you could possibly want to watch. And all of them are also cross posted to our Facebook page, all of those things. And our Instagram, we share things three times a day, Twitter, everywhere and anywhere on the internet. (laughs) Great. Awesome. I'll link to all of those in the in the show notes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I I feel like this was like a behind the scenes of the fashion industry slash body acceptance and fashion intersect and how to find clothes that fit. So there's so much good stuff here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Rock on. It is so great to see somebody in the fashion industry putting body positive principles into practice. This is much, much needed. So I love everything that Mallory is doing. And it was so cool to hear about some of the behind the scenes stuff stuff that you just don't realize when you are a consumer. So Mallory said there's tons of videos that detail that stuff further on her blog. So you're going to be able to find that in the show notes at summerinandin.com forward slash 87. All right. Thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you next time.